YouTube family. It's that time of day, it's that time of the week, it's that time of the month again. And it's absolutely friggin' beautiful. And uh, for the most part, I think the weather report was kind of misleading. People thought it was going to be rough. So I, it looks like I beat the crowds. So uh, we're going to pick up some ballyhoo. We're going to use the famous ballyhoo. Uh, throw out some chum and uh, see if we can pick up a sailfish here in this area. If not, man, I'm into this slow pitch jigging. I'm trying to learn it. A um, couple of things about slow pitch jigging um, as we continue to evolve in this process. So there's pros and cons, just like there is anything else. So one of the pros is, is there's no bait. There's no, uh, you don't need to buy any bait. You don't have to get chum. You just need a good couple of uh, jigs that can go to different uh, depths of the water column. Heavier for the, you know, when there's more current. Um, so once you do a little research and you figure out which jigs to use, big, thin, heavy ones for down deep, um, and then of course you, they want them to flutter, and then you'll find out what's good and what works in your area. So that's the pro. The con is, is that until you get a good technique down, you're going to find that you may lose some jigs because for the most part you're jigging on the bottom, unless you see something up in the water column. Uh, so it's bottom fishing for the most part. And you're over some hard bottom and sometimes live bottom. And you're going to hook up and you're going to test your equipment and you're going to find out how good your knots are and how strong your line is. Um, so when that happens, that's a good thing to do. Uh, you're going to break off and you'll find out where you break off. But I think after a while you get a better technique. You hit the bottom, bounce it off real quick and try to know where that jig is in the water column. Know how many cranks it takes to go 10 feet. Um, so you know when you're 10 feet up, you drop it back down. Try not to hit the bottom every time. So anyway, uh, pros and cons to everything you do, but um, slow pitch jigging is an exciting way uh, to really up your game uh, in fishing. And as you have noticed, and as I have found out, everything so far eats the jig. So follow me, it's gonna be an exciting day. Nice and easy. Catch your belly who nice and easy. So I think we're gonna pick up probably a dozen and then we'll be out of here. For the most part, we'll be jigging and keeping a livey just out there. Wild and free. John fish on big time. Idea what he is, but he hit the Rapala jig. Or I should say the Rapala swim plug. And he took a lot of line initially. Kind of interesting because I've got a uh, frigate bird right above me, and he hit right at that same time. So hoping it's not a Barry. You know the deal with that. <laughs> Look at this little, little, little pen reel. 20 pound test. And he slammed it. It was a good hit. Ooh, 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 first fish of the day. Well, first hit of it. I haven't had the fish yet. One thing's for sure, he wanted this thing. I got color down there. No idea yet. Looks like it could be a Barry. Oh, there we go. Nice little zero mackerel. Nice. I think we got some sushi. Oh man. That is a pretty, pretty mango. Make sure it's a zero. My favorite mackerel, right here. Nice. That's a that's the way to do it. He's a pretty, pretty fish. Whew. Awesome. First fish of the day. 
Couldn't ask for anything better. Awesome, awesome. Oh, is it gone? Huh. First hit of the day and I lost him. And he hit it three times. There he is, there he is, there he is. We got him, we got him this time. Oh yeah, that's not a bot. Oh yeah, we don't have him on the bottom. Three times he hit it and I lost him. And now, I got him. He is mine. Three times. Nice spot right here. We're gonna mark that spot. There are definitely fish there that want the jig. Not my guess. Martin, that's my guess. There we go. <laughs> sure enough, it is a mutton, but he's a shorty. So we've been picking up shorts in this 110 or so feet of water, but still, mutton, muttons like the jig. Nice. Three times you hit it, at least. Nice little fish. Yeah. All right. Back you go, buddy. What I need is mama or papa. There he is. <clears throat> got him. I found where the small buttons are. Now I gotta find where the big buttons are. And again, you hit it, you missed it, and then came back. Hit it again. A nice little fish. Same spot, exactly the same spot. So I would imagine this is just years of experience and just kind of figuring, I think, you know, the same size fish hang out together. Otherwise they'd get eaten. So I'm thinking, as much as this is fun, I've got to find where the big thing is. Two passes, two muttons. It's hard to leave, but I think we're gonna have to. There's a fish. <clears throat> Man, I am elated with the slow fish jigging. <laughs> Nothing, I can't say anything more about it. I mean, I just can't say, I can't say too much about it. It's just amazing. I'm gonna show you the exact one that I'm using today but most of them work so oh, this is an odd looking fish so this is a lizard fish you would think that the lizard fish would be smart enough to see that the jig, the jig is bigger than he is <clears throat> everything off the bottom amazing all right let's get back down there i know there's a big mutton there someplace something hit this jig on the way down i, I have no idea <laughs> It could be just, maybe the jig is just tangled because he's not really fighting, but it just feels weird. And there were some fish underneath the boat. I don't know. I don't know. Not. Yeah, this could be just a, a tangled up jig. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Man, it just felt weird. It felt like a hit, and I wasn't sure, and then this is the way it came in. So, by the way, this is the jigs that I am using. They're Ocean Cat, 200 grams, and the rule of thumb is um, to do one gram per foot of water that you're fishing in. So I'm only fishing in 120 right now, but it's a 200 gram jig. The current is kind of running, so I'm trying to get it down as quick as I can. These ocean cats have done a pretty good job for me. Um, there's a bunch of other companies out there. Um, there's a couple of companies I wish with, I could uh, hook up with and just kind of work with. Um, so we're going to see what we can do with that in the future, I guess. But uh, these jigs have been working out very, very well. I've been picking them up on Amazon. Ocean Cat, 200 grams, silver and blue back. Uh, it's glow on the front. Pretty reasonable jigs as well. So anyway, I got to get back down there because we got some good, good hard bottom. 
All right, just switched out my jig. First, first drop with the new jig, and boom, hooked up. Can't really tell what it is yet. Not sure if it's gonna be a big fish, a little fish. Got a little bit of head shakes though. So I'm not sure. Doesn't, doesn't seem like a big fish. We'll see. That's the beauty of this. We will see. It's coming up nice and easy. So I don't think he knows he's hooked yet. Uh, all of a sudden, he got a little heavier. Oh yeah, we got uh, we got some color here. Looks like a red grouper. Actually, not. It's another strawberry grouper. Look at this beauty. I can't believe it. I found strawberry grouper land. Look at this. Very pretty fish. God, they're beautiful fish. We have got to make sure we take care of this guy and let him get away. The other one we had the other day was quite a bit bigger. But nice fish nonetheless. I mean, he's just a beauty. All right. I got to come back here and get him unhooked. <clears throat> So not a bad size strawberry grouper, but the other one we had was probably twice the size. So, but very pretty fish, big, beautiful fins. Look at that, just beautiful. The coloring on there is amazing. All right, buddy, you gotta go. So here's a little uh, pro tip again. I've switched out to a 250 gram uh, slow pitch jig. Again, Ocean Cat, 250 grams. Uh, beautiful action on this jig. Gets me down a little faster because I need it today. And I'm not I'm not going to use the bottom assist jigs. I know I should. I mean, I know I'll get more hookups, but I'm afraid of every time I eat, I'm going to lose them. So I'm afraid of hooking up on the bottom. I guess I got to get used to that. Maybe get smaller hooks for the bottom. I'm not sure. But anyway, I picked up that strawberry grouper. First drop on this beauty. So there it is. Ocean Cat. 250 grams fishing in uh, only 130 feet of water because so. you've been driving me nuts <clears throat> so are you a tuna <clears throat> what are you no, you're a good fish whatever you are you're a good fish yeah Shit. <clears throat> i don't want to give him any line just one reel. He's a good sized fish. Oh yeah, he's right there. Woo wee. Nice fish. What is that? What in the world is that? Trigger fish. Look at that. <laughs> Does everything eat the jig or what? I ask you. A beautiful trick. <laughs> Got him right in there. Well, all right, so last week, queen trigger. This week, gray trigger. Pretty fish on the jig. Woohoo! All right, we're going to let this one go too. And a good release. All right, so this is an end to an absolutely fantastic day. We got uh, one beautiful Ciro mackerel. We got two mutton snappers on the jig. We got a beautiful trigger fish on the jig. And I caught so much, I forget all the stuff we got. So it was just a really great day. Really kind of um, sharpening my, my slow pitch jigging skills, finding some new spots. I think that's the key. And um, I'm just going to keep looking until I find out where those big mutton, those big winter mutton, they're out there someplace. I am going to find them. So anyway, thank you for following me. It's been a great day. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. It costs you nothing and uh, sort of help support us. We're trying to hit 15,000 subscribers. We'd love to do, have your help. We'd love to have you on board with us. Uh, we'd love for you to follow us as well. So 
thanks a lot for all you people who have subscribed. Um, we'll probably have another giveaway coming out pretty soon. In the meantime, for those of you that are starting to work on uh, slow pitch jigging, keep up the uh, the comments. If you're more than happy to help out and give you any any tips that I come across. Um, I've even got some questions out to some other pro uh, jiggers out there, and uh, anything that I uh, learn from them, I will certainly share with you. All right, so we just filleted the two slices, or the two sides, I should say. So very easy to fillet, easy fish. Get the bone right down the middle, no problem. And we're gonna cut it into steaks, and then we're gonna do a whole smoking process. So really looking forward to that. The uh, ribs off the belly. There we go. Well, that would make a nice bait. <laughs> and then we've got a bone that goes right down through the middle here. So this is kind of like a tuna. We can uh, kind of take it off here and then just and then I think we'll just do steaks on there. So kind of like this. Say you want some sushi? Mm -hmm. Hey everybody, welcome to the kitchen. We are now going to take that mackerel that Captain Dan caught and turn it into something amazing. My favorite thing ever, which is smoked fish dip. It is super easy. You only need a few ingredients. So follow me. The first step for any successful smoked fish dip is the brine. Step one, get a pot with some water in it. Up next, add in some brown sugar. One heaping teaspoon will do. Garlic, because would it even be a Florida fishing couple recipe without it? Let's go, pour it in. Two bay leaves. Now, most recipes for a fish brine will tell you to use kosher salt. And if you need just to eat kosher foods, that's great. Kosher salt is wonderful. However, we prefer Himalayan salt because it has lots of minerals and nutrients and the reason why most channels recommend kosher salt is because it dissolves really easily. But if you grind up that Himalayan salt, it'll do just fine. So use the salt you want. You want to make sure all the sugar and the salt completely dissolves. So give that a good stir. In goes the mackerel. Now it's ready for the fridge. You can let the mackerel sit in the refrigerator in that brine for as little as 30 minutes all the way till overnight. So it just depends on how much time you have. I'm probably gonna let it sit for about an hour and then we'll throw it in the smoker. All right, now we're gonna take the mackerel out of the brine. Look at this, nice thick piece. We're gonna quickly rinse it with some cool water. Then we are gonna set it. I've got about four paper towels here. We're gonna sit it down and we're gonna thoroughly dry them all. This one is going to be too big for the rack, so I'm just going to cut it right in half. So here's how I arranged uh, the fillets on the racks. You see I left enough room that the smoke will be able to come up through. None of it is touching and it should all get cooked very evenly. Um, something really important here is you want to make sure the fish is completely dry. You don't want to go steam the fish uh, instead of smoke it. Using some apple smoking chips today. I have the 
probe in to watch the temperature, and now we're gonna let it do its thing. So you can see already that filet temperature is coming up. It was at 60 degrees when we put it in there. It's now at 66, but we need it to be at 160. There it is, all smoked up. We're gonna cover this and put it in the refrigerator for tonight. We had a little piece and it's gonna be great. So we're serving it with some unsalted tortilla chips, but you could also do crackers or vegetables or anything you really want to. Sometimes I've had it on salad um, at the restaurant. So you definitely want to have a lemon wedge and we also have some jalapenos or you could use some Tabasco. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to try it, babe? I, I just want to try it. This is your first attempt. So I want to try it just plain to see if flavor and then after that I'll put a whole bunch of stuff on it. But I just want to just give it first try. Mm. Now that mm. sucks, you have to say that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very nice. The only thing I would say, oh man, it's got a nice little smoky flavor. The sewer mackerel is really mild, very nice. I would say the only thing it needs is a little bit of salt. But I'm going to get that with the Tabasco, and I'm going to get that with the jalapeno. I better not do both. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Mm. There it is. Mm hmm. Mm. Excellent. All right, so I'm trying it with a Whopper. little sweet pepper. Wow. It's just like a bell pepper. That's pretty cool. What do you think? You are the fish dip connoisseur. You love fish dip. So what I did, um, because I, I knew it was going to need some extra uh, freshness to it, is I put some of the le uh, lemon rind in there. Um, but it still does need, I tried it with nothing on it. It needs a little squeeze of lemon too, in my opinion. And to your point, um, a little salt. So if you're using salted chips, don't add salt to it. Or if you're using salted crackers, don't add salt to it. But if you're going au natural, maybe a little sprinkle of, of salt will be good. So here's something else. Captain Dan is now going to use some celery sticks to eat it. Um, it's super good if you're into celery. I did not put it in the dip because celery makes my tongue go numb. But if you go into some of the restaurants, they'll put the <laughs> celery actually in it. I just chose not to. So that's totally up to you. There you go. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. Bada bing, bada bing. Nice. All right. Try that. What do you mm -hmm. think? Mm. I love the crunch, the cold, with the fish. You did a really good job on this fish. Thanks, babe. Very good job. So hey, there you have it. It was an absolutely great day on the water. I got that zero mackerel. That was the biggest zero mackerel I've ever caught. I think it's the biggest zero mackerel I've ever seen. Yeah, I think it was huge, so he was great. And as a result, you made that fabulous fish dip. You know, I've got to say, I'm very impressed with myself on that fish dip. It was so good. You never smoked anything else before. No, took, nothing. Took command of my smoker and just whacked it out of the park, man. That's, That's really right. Good. He did some bridge fishing. And uh, I smoked the fish by myself. Yeah, it was really, really, really good. I'm very impressed with you. So now we don't, we don't have to go buy a fish tip anymore. We're just like strategically eliminating things we have to buy. These people learn how to make them. So anyway, it was great. Yeah. So the good thing about that smoker <laughs> is, um, if you use light flavored chips or those pellets, uh, it's not overly smoked. So it was like a light smoky flavor. I used apple. the apple chips. Yeah. Yeah, that came out really, really good. Yeah, really you don't want to overpower the fish is the important part. And we've had some some fish that we had that just overly smoky. Yeah, and it's some of the recipes, because I was looking up some recipes, um, call for liquid smoke. I think that's oh, no. totally unnecessary. Do not use that. Not with fish. Yeah. No, so never be over the top. Unless yeah. you just got to have that. Anyway, I, that's not the way we like it. So. Right. A little bit of lemon, a little bit of hot sauce. Man, that was really good. Really yeah, good. So, that was great. Super job. Thank so, you. Collaborative effort. That's right. Listen, we love you guys so much. Thank you for always watching, leaving your comments, and subscribing oh, if you have not subscribed. Yeah, we need you to subscribe. We know yes. you're out there watching. We know how we know that because we see the views. We know you're watching, but we need you to just hit the button and subscribe. That's right. So just go hit it like right now. Also, turn on the bell. That way you don't miss any uh, episodes of the future. Yeah, you do that, and we'll put out more videos. That's right. It's kind of like a deal.
That's right. You can't subscribe, or we'll make the videos. There That's right. right. And thank you to everyone who's been longtime subscribers. We know who you are, and we love you so much. Absolutely. And you know what to do. Follow uh, us. I know where you are. <clears throat> Definitely time for a beer. So, let's do the tally here. First of all, I burned up one of the cameras by just leaving it on by accident. And just blabbed away, blah, 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 the whole time. About nothing, I'm sure. Of course, though, I do hold good conversations with myself. Nonetheless, woo, get a little, get a little dicey on it. Successful smoked fish dip. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> My most channels offer blah, blah. Now the fish has to brine in the brine. We're gonna keep that blah, 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 blah. You can let the mackerel sit in the brine in the refrigerator for as little to uh, blah, blah, blah. shit. That's gonna make me the bloopers. Okay, bloopers. Alright, anyway. So there it is. We had, I had, I had, it was all me. <laughs> I mean, that's true, but geez. Okay, from the top. It was, it was, a, it was just a great, uh, a great show and a great ending to, uh, you know, what's a nice smoky fish dude. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I had it here all day for okay. a while. You, you, you had it, you had, had it together here. How about let's go to the fish dude? And there you have it. So we did not <laughs> no. only do we do a catch. No, no. <laughs> Okay. No. Oh my god. <laughs> Today, please. Be well, I don't know what we're saying. Oh my god. Let's, let's do it. <laughs>